Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we're outside. Yes, I'm joined alongside the fantastic, the very well-spoken <laughs> Hamish Carton. Hamish, how are you doing? It's good to have you back on the channel. I think this is the second time I've had you on. Uh, second day. Aye, we're doing something similar today. We're going to go through some questions before the derby. I decided why not change it up a wee bit, considering we've done the lengthy podcast, we've previewed basically everything. We've also spoken in depth about the manager's comments heading into the game, everything else. So we'll have a wee bit of fun today. We'll, we'll let the viewers dictate where we're going with this. Um, I, I don't know if you listen to the podcast ever. Not yet. No, not yet. No, no. Not, not the most recent right, one. Right, I, I do it. usually listen, but Aye, I've been very well, busy this week. You'll know that at the end of the show, we always have like a question segment uh-huh. and we just get asked the most bizarre questions. We're building a reputation for some sort of food podcast. I don't know what it is. Um, but if there is any food questions, I'm sure we'll come on to it in this video. We're going to try and cover everything that is in relation to the derby this weekend, the Scottish Cup semi final, maybe some Scottish Cup memories if that comes up, and just all the general stuff. Um, Hamish, before we do go into it, I mean, we've, we've covered it in your channel. Make sure to check out Hamish's video if you haven't. We have covered it in your channel, but how are you feeling going into the game? Uh, may as well get your general thoughts. I think I'm quite relaxed about the game, actually. Usually, these games, I'm, you know, I'm I'm really, really nervous. Like, the game at Ibrooks a few weeks ago, I was so nervous. This one, I just, I feel really, really relaxed for mm-hmm. some reason. I feel as if, I feel as if the, the team just have this one covered. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't really, because Rangers are a good side. I mean, they're a Europa League Semi finalists, like it or not, final side at the moment. Like, well, I don't like it, but <laughs> you have to admit they are a good team. But I just, it's so weird because I just, I have more faith in Celtic beating them this weekend than I do in any team in left in the Europa League beating them. Mm-hmm. And and like teams like Leipzig, I'd say are much better than Celtic. It's a yeah. weird, weird situation. But um, in terms of you know this weekend, I've just got full belief in Ange. And these players that they'll they'll get the job done. Do you think it helps that this isn't a league fixture? I know it's kind of you know there's no second chances. You lose this game, you're out the cup. But because it's not the risk of screwing up a league title or, or giving them an advantage and and chasing us in the split, do you think that kind of helps take off the nerves a wee bit? Because that's how I've been looking. I've been like, seeing so knowing that we're still six clear no matter yeah. what happens. That's that's a comforting sort of thing. I think the overall goal of this season was always going to be winning the league, and anything else was really a bonus. Yeah. A good European campaign was a bonus. It happened to an extent, I would suggest, given the way it started. We did all right in the Europa League. Yeah, Obviously, nine points in a tough group. Yeah, the Conference League wasn't great. The League Cup, I think, was, was huge, but it was a bonus. It's all about winning the league this year. Mm-hmm. And if Celtic lose this tomorrow and win the league, we'll still be looking back in this season. It's been an amazing, amazing campaign. So I think that, that kind of gives us a wee bit of... A tiny bit of the feeling that the pressure's ever so slightly off. I think for them it's absolutely massive because they have to, you know, they can do all this European run and I don't think they're going to win the Europa League. I don't think they'll get past Leipzig and that can kind of camouflage how good or bad a season they're having. Mm -hmm. But if they don't win this tomorrow, it'll be another season without a domestic trophy for them. They've won one, I think, in like the last... 2011. Yeah, 11 years. And, And if we win, you know, tomorrow we're on for another treble again. So I think... I think that's kind of why I just feel so relaxed about this is that it's much, it feels much more important to them. Aye. As much as, don't get me wrong, like on Sunday I'm going to be, you know, right up for it and, you know. You'll be gutted if we lose. Absolutely gutted. I'll be verge of tears and all that stuff. But <laughs> um, I, I think f- for, for them it's just, it just kind of, it defines their season basically, it is does. what I'm trying to say. Whereas for us, it doesn't. The league is always the big thing. If we yep. win the league and lose tomorrow, it's still going to be a big season. We win a double at the end of the day. That would be just oh, that yeah. would be sensational. Considering where we all thought we'd be come the end of the season to, to walk away with two trophies, would be mad. Um, we will get on to your questions. Let's have a wee look at what you are all saying. We're going to start with a familiar face. We're going to start with Mister Stevie himself. Um, Stevie, on the reaction for you tomorrow. Possibly, we've actually Possibly. not even sorted out our plans Aye. for it yet. I don't know if Stevie's going to the game or not. I think he might be. As long as he's wearing the gilet or the what's it he calls it the body warmer. Yeah, he's just going about telling folk what day it is for some reason. <laughs> I don't understand why that. Is. But he's asked, um, do you have faith that Maida will continue out wide where he is most effective in giving their fullbacks an utter nightmare, or do you reckon he'll be put in the number nine role that saw him heavily criticised at Easter Road and against Bodo? If you remember, we drew with Hibbs when he played right. up front, and then obviously Bodo was Bodo. Um, he he says surely he's on the left. Do you agree with him being he, on the left? He's been going on about that like since since Yakimak has got his injury. <laughs> Genuinely, the minute Yakimak has got his injury at the game last weekend, I think he mentioned it to me. You know that this gives us an issue. Uh, I, I think 
I've just I've I've said all along I don't think Kyogo will start, but I've got a growing feeling now that he might for some reason just mm-hmm. after Angie's comments and just given that you know Kyogo looked quite fit when he he played last week should have should have got a goal in terms of Maida. If he plays through the middle, I don't, I, I don't think it's a massive issue for Celtic. Yeah. I think he, he just works so hard that he kind of be everywhere anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then you'd probably get a badder in the team, and a badder has looked really lively against Rangers. Already scored one, should have had a couple of Ibrooks as well. And then you'd have Kyogo coming off the bench. So I think we've got loads of options there. So I, I don't think it's a massive, um, massive, massive issue in terms of deciding the game. But I think if Kyogo starts the game, I realise the question wasn't about Kyogo, but if he's starting the game, I think the whole Celtic support just gets a massive, massive boost that they probably don't if he's not, if yeah. that makes sense. But in terms of actually deciding the game, I don't think it actually matters where Maida plays. Fair enough. The only thing that I would say <coughs> in relation to Maida, if he starts up front, if he does start and he doesn't have the greatest of performances leading the line, I can't be bothered with the sort of reaction that might come with it, especially yeah. if the game doesn't go our way. I feel like it'll be one of those reactionary things where he's been good for weeks and then suddenly people yeah, are like, he's, oh, he's, he's, he's rotten, again, he's right. rotten, you know what I mean? I, I can't really be bothered with that side of things, but, you know. But this, enough, uh, enough about the 67 heel heel reaction, <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> um, Carl McFadden has asked, very quick one here probably, um, if we win the treble, will either of you get a tattoo of Charles Joseph Hart? I mean, I think that's mostly aimed towards me. Yeah, I'm, yeah I definitely. Might, I might are you a fan that. of tattoos? I've not got any. I neither have I've I. never. I've said I've never, right person, I said I'd never ever get one. But when we were in Leverkusen, I put up a tweet saying if we beat Leverkusen tonight, I'll get an Ange Postecoglou tattoo. And I was sitting there with ten minutes to go, going, Christ, <laughs> this is going to have to happen. So, you know, I was quite happy Leverkusen won that night. <laughs> um, so, is, is it a yes? Uh, well, uh, do you know what? Aye, we'll commit to it. If we win the treble, I'll get a Joe Hart tattoo. What, would you, what would they say? Just Joe Hart? Joe Hart's face would be decent or something. Aye. <laughs> or, uh, Speech bubble, decent. Aye, uh, you'd get something good. See, something crazy, by the way, and this is just because I'm looking straight ahead. That's Celtic Park over there. Aye, that's right, aye. Never noticed that. Never noticed that you could see Celtic see, especially Park when like, I don't know if the viewers can make out where we are, but there's like a staircase up there when you go into the actual stadium. See, if you're up there, you can basically see right over the park. I keep man. looking at it, it looks like Celtic Park. <laughs> How far away is that then? It's <laughs> Emirates. Um, it's about, t- I'd say about a 10 minute drive. Right, okay. About a 10 minute drive. Away. It's not that, not that bad. Sorry. Um, it's all right, it's a keen <laughs> observation for me once more. Um, this is one thing that we never, there's a car gone by, hello there sir. Um, there's one thing that we never touched on in your video, and that was the 50 50 split. This is the yeah, first time in yeah. a long time that there's going to be that sort of atmosphere between the two sets of support. Um, so Cal has asked, how do you think the 50-50 split of the fans will affect the players? Because mm. this is, you know, for as much as we've spoke about the first derbies that a lot of people played in, this is really the first one where they're going to have that yeah. sort of toxic back and should forth. I'm looking forward. I'm really <laughs> excited for it personally. I know. Uh, it should be good. I mean, it would be the Julian final, wouldn't it? It would be the last one. Because obviously... Um, you know, with the fans not being here for a while and that. Um, although we didn't, we didn't play Rangers at Hamden here, so I'm talking absolute <laughs> nonsense. But uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. Just the, the derbies have lost so much. I know you agree with that feeling as well. I think most people yep. who enjoy this fixture do as well. And Hamden's really the only place now where you get that kind of back and forth. I just think they're they're amazing these games at Hamden. You know, so many good memories that we we touched on in, on my channel. But um, it should be good. I mean, the players walking out tomorrow. We'll be loving it, like yep. 20, 25,000 of each support. The atmosphere, it's, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. just the whole, you know, obviously one side of the stadium will be tricolored, the other side will be union jacked. Um, it's going to be it's going to be interesting, um, especially with, you know, the way this season's panned out. You know, there's come the end of the, 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 the game, watching hopefully that side of the stadium pile out is one of my oh, favourite things but it can be made no even s- the end of the game oh no even the end it could be you know 10, minutes could be 10, 20 as you said 30 minutes to go yeah. but especially because of the way that we are right now with the manager and this team it will just feel even better if that's the case and that's what I mean though like their whole thing at the moment is their whole season has been kind of camouflaged by this European, European run and listen the European run all joking aside is pretty impressive yep. I would love to see Celtic get into a semi-final that's my dream <laughs> of the Europa League it'd be amazing um, I was too young really to properly remember Seville really mm-hmm. but like I kind of feel like the minute they go out of Europe it'll kind of the, it, everything will become clear about what the actual season is and in reality when you take the European stuff I mean losing the league and if we can beat them tomorrow going for another treble another season of no trophies for them 
that will hurt them tomorrow. I mean, yep. Rangers fans are living, and Rangers as a team are living two different lives at That's the moment. Right. You've got this amazing Thursday night life. Mm-hmm. It's like me as an 18 year old. Amazing <laughs> Thursday night life. Fire, what a Rest of the show. week. Hung over, yep. feeling horrendous. That's Rangers in a nutshell. That's a really well done. I yeah. like that. That was a really good um, comparison there. Uh, Tam has asked, "Here's one for both of you. Do you think it's as simple as turn up and play your game and we beat them?" Yes, that's simple. I, ge- yeah, I genuinely yeah. do. I think. I would agree. I'd agree. I-, I think if Celtic hit their top level, and I- I'm already seeing this in TikTok on Monday. <laughs> I think. It- I think if Celtic hit their top level, Rangers struggle to deal with us, and I think we've seen that in the last couple of games. And I'm. The reason I think I'm so calm on top of everything I've already said is that I am really sure Celtic will hit their top level. Mm -hmm. Celtic, over the last four or five weeks since we went out of Europe, have just every single week actually got better every single week but hit that top level every single week and I think we'll see that tomorrow I think we'll see an improvement on what we saw at Ibrox in terms of the performance and we beat them at Ibrox in that atmosphere so surely here 50-50 split that will you know, stand us in good stead Yeah, it's a good question from Tam because simply put I think we're the better team as yeah, we'll I mean, touch the, the yeah, league table course. shows that. Yeah, yeah, it? of course and, and you know they are in the semi-finals of European competition fair play we've given them that credit but We've shown over the course of this season we are the better team, um, and that's as simple as it has to be. You know, the better team turns up, the better team wins. Um, so I'm very confident that that's the case for us. And do you know what? I, I made this sort of um, comment earlier on in the week in the channel. You remember the the, the snippets they released of the team talk from Hibs? Yep. Brilliant. You know, repeat that, and it should be in the bag. What, what would you write? So you're Ange again. We did this in <laughs> my channel. What's your team talk? I'll I'll be a player, oh, right? Christ. I'll be. Uh, I'll just be Tom Rogic, right? You're Tom Rogic. Yeah. Right, Tommy. <laughs> Win the day. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you need to go into something about no. oh, your Listen. your dad gave you everything Listen. and you know you need to fight for him Listen. out there. Your dad, he paid for the football lessons, right? <laughs> he sent you to school. You done well. Yeah. You've got to pay him back tonight, right? Okay, okay Gaffer. You go out there. If you don't score, don't come fucking back. Right? <laughs> that's 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 what is happening saying. here, man. <laughs> no, a wee bit of, a wee bit of, um, I was going to use the term role play, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> we better leave that one out. Uh, don't want uh, to check Reddit yeah. after this. Um, we'll go through a couple more questions before we end up. Um, <laughs> you're still laughing away there, Hamish. <laughs> Jesus. This is the difference between my channel and Aye. his channel. Come on, Ryan 118's channel, they said. It'll Profe- be fun, they said. Professionalism, it just kind of oozes. So, Jerry, he's asked, are we due a big performance from Jota? Now... Mm. We touched on this in the podcast and McGinley was very outspoken in saying he thinks this is the derby for Jota because he hasn't... Based on what? Well, his his method was that he's not scored yet in a derby. Um, He's not been maybe as sort of as the first half of the season. Now, I've I've been on... I said in my player of the year video yesterday, I was like, I think it's very harsh to say that about Jota because with him in the team, he brings so much. I think he's prolific. I think that his presence alone makes a huge difference just because of the quality he has. But do you think that this is the the derby now for him to kind of turn up and and get that man of the match performance? Because if you remember, when he first signed, every week he was man... It was like five or six games in a row, I think he was man of the match. Mm. But maybe he's not had one of those performances against Rangers yet. So do you think this could be the, the chance for him? He's not had it in terms of scoring against him, but he's played against him twice and he was really good at Celtic Park. Probably just eclipsed by, you know, like Hatati and Abada and, you know, players like that, McGregor that night. Um, Ibrox, I thought he was, he wasn't spectacular, but I thought he was pretty good again. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't think he's been underperforming against Rangers at all. But yeah, I know, I know what McGinley means. I mean, it's a big. You know, you, you want that really defining performance from Jota that we maybe got in the first half of the season a lot, especially in Europe. I mean, he scored a lot of big goals. Ferenc Varos away, Leverkusen away. And we've maybe not quite seen it as much in the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, although I think, you know, he's really, you know, really upped his game in, in the last kind of month or so. I think he's been a, a really good player for us. So hopefully, hopefully tomorrow he's, he's ready to turn it on. I think he's played here once at Hamden against St. Johnson and it was really good that game. I remember him really enjoying himself, a lot of flicks and tricks and and stuff like that. So, um, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but I'm I'm not really I'm not really fussed. I don't think it has to be spectacular from him. I just think just do what he's been doing. I mean, may, maybe spectacular for Jota is putting the cross in that mm. Kyogo or Maida heads into the net, and, yep. and that's spectacular enough for me. It doesn't need to be, you know, skinning eight players and yep. chipping McGregor while. 
Listen, for Whistling me, if, if we win the game, tones. I couldn't care. I, I couldn't care if he, you know, if, if he scores, if he assists, if he gets booked. I, I don't care if we yeah. win the game. Ultimately, I think everybody's going to play their part tomorrow. Um, and it'll be very rare to see a bad game from Shaw. I, I don't think we'd expect anything like that. But yeah. hopefully, I would love to see him in the score sheet. A curler for 30 yards or something. That would be absolutely He's maybe due one of them. Fantastic. That would be. He tries them quite a lot. I think he, he came does. close against St. Johnson. Johnson he, did, and he did. He came very close. And from the right hand side of his left foot. And just, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically the majority of things covered there from the questions. Some really good questions. There's one that I'll save for the very end. Actually, I'll ask it now because I'll end it in Celtic chat. Somebody has asked, and because of the, the Celtic, the funders, nature of asking food questions, Aidan has begged me to ask you, what is your KFC order? KFC. Now, I'm going to be honest, I hate KFC. I actually it's am. actually my favourite food place at the moment, so Aidan's, really? Aidan's clearly been either stalking me or just incredibly <laughs> lucky. Um I really like the, oh, what do they call them now? The the, the special recipe chicken where you get oh, like, right, yeah, I just yeah. love that, and the hot wings are incredible. So I get I get some of the special, maybe two or three bits of the, yeah. the recipe chicken, I think it's called, and then four hot wings, and then probably I quite like the mash. I had the mash last mash. time. I've never had the mash before. Interesting. Um, but it's mash or fries. I'd probably go for the mash. I'm, I know they changed their fries a few years ago, but I'm not a no, not a huge fan not of them. Not a fan at all. Not a fan. So I'd go mash. The beans are unbelievable. Um, maybe a wrap as well. Not a fan of the chicken popcorn, really. Nah. So you're probably talking mash beans. <laughs> Can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> mash beans, a wrap, uh, two or three bits of recipe chicken, and four hot wings. There you go, Aiden. Cheers. Lovely. What an order that is, by I the way. I, just... I feel like Rizzo now. Listen is uh, <laughs> listen is Subway order. I only like the the wee wraps. That's it. That's not a, a KFC. I'm not a fan. I think I it's... used to go in and never have a clue what I what I wanted because it was such a weird place. But now. Now I know exactly what I want. It it's helps, good. obviously, being on Just Eat as well. Aye, aye. And then, to end off the video, Hamish, I may as well ask the question, even though we've answered said question, on your podcast, or not your podcast, your show. Um, my bad. The prediction. I think... Uh, I th- I've just got visions of us scoring a late breakaway goal to clinch the, the win, mm-hmm. and I think Rangers will score, so that kind of makes me think... Either four two or three one, and I think three four. ones three ones more likely. So maybe a couple of goals traded in the first half, one each at half time. We get ahead, maybe kind of midway through the second half. They go all out, tired, uh, tiring legs, and we get a breakaway third through. Kyogo, Kyogo, how about that? That would be gorgeous. What see, a script. see the goal he scored against Hibs, iconic. But imagine him repeating that against Rangers, like the images, Larson esque. Even that goal, like this season, we've got good memories of him. We've already won a trophy That's here. Right. And they, they get trounced off Hibs. <laughs> That's right, 3 0, were it? 3 1. 3 1. Uh, I forgot the Arfield one scored and did his. Did his wee salute. <laughs> Um, <laughs> aye, so that's it my prediction's 1-0 um, I don't know why I'm going so low but I just feel it's going to be a, a close affair um, I would like us to get a goal in the most controversial manner possible ideally Kyogo um, offside off-side. with his hand yes yes. Like hit Thierry on style like keeps the ball in play but it somehow hits the back of the net while he's at it um, but aye that's my prediction that's Hamish's prediction Hamish thanks very much it's been good to be on. Uh, thank you for letting me bump your equipment again. <laughs> I'm a ponson bastard. Um, but aye, it's been brilliant. Everybody like and subscribe if you've been watching the video. Let us know all your stuff in the comments below, your thoughts, your predictions, all that. Um, and make sure to check out Hamish's channel as well. What is that now, 28? Aye, 28. 28. Uh, just shy of it. Just, just I'm not even sure. Right? It's either 27 and a half or 28 and a half. You're there 28 somewhere. and a half. You're 28 in that region half. anyway. Aye. So make sure to head over there and drop a subscribe if you haven't already and uh, that will do it for me and Hamish enjoy the game and I'll see you for my non-hungover reaction on Monday morning goodbye